Hi everyone, welcome to The Birchwood. I realized that a lot of the time I come across as a really serious individual and so I wanted to do something a little bit more personal and fun today and bring around my friend Brittany Bishop. We're really close friends and we're both interested in historical fashion so I decided that we would get to play the game Guess the Date. So my Patreons got to choose from a variety of centuries. There was an even tie between 15th and 19th century so I decided because I don't really want the very first episode of this series to be an absolute train wreck that we were going to cover the 19th century first because that's one of the eras that I'm more well-versed in. I absolutely know pretty much nothing about the 15th century. And then in the next episode, we can cover 15th century, and then you all can see the dumpster fire of guesses. So the rules of the game are pretty simple. Brittany has selected a series of garments from the Met for me to check out, and I need to guess what year that they were made in, but I am giving myself a little bit of leeway, so I will get a point if it's plus or minus two years. Brittany has not told me the actual dates. She's basically just given me a document with the photos. And after I've done each guess and we've communicated about it, she's going to then reveal the date to all of us. And we get to see how well I did or how poorly I did. I should make the disclaimer that I'm not a fashion historian, I'm literally just an enthusiast who really enjoys wearing historical clothing. And so for that reason, these are going to be probably not always the most accurate guesses, but I'm going to do my best to use deductive reasoning and figure out when these dresses might have been created. How do you think I'm going to do? I honestly think you're going to do better than what you're thinking. There's a couple in there that I threw in there for a bit of an easier win. There's a couple there though I definitely don't think you're going to guess, because I had no clue whether or not they were Victorian, so we'll see, Great. we'll see. Thank you. Thank you for making it so difficult. <laughs> but have fun. There was, I think, one or two of them that said only a decade. So I think that one, I'll just give you an extra point anyway, just for- Oh. Just, just for being nice. You did um, some freebies then, just to help me out. Listening to you talk about like the mid-Victorian might actually be educational for me because my only window of knowledge is literally like a 20-year gap of 1890 to 1910. So let's just start and see how it goes. I am a little bit nervous. So the very first one is this blue and white kind of floral dress with a really gorgeous print. Maybe shot silk because it has that silvery undertone with the blue. I think that this is 1840s. Okay. The reason why is because of this kind of droopy... No, maybe it's 1850s. This type of bodice style where they had like these different layers of the bodice where it, it almost looks Georgian. But this kind of style was really popular in both the 1840s and the 1850s for the neckline. But wow, this neckline is like plunging almost. It's really low. The style is sleeve. It's set really low, so it's probably mid-Victorian because that's very mid-Victorian. And then also you have this kind of under-sleeve business going on with the lace. Pretty wide skirt. I mean, it, it doesn't quite look as wide as it would with a crinoline, but it kind of looks like stacked petticoats. So I'm thinking it's pre-crinoline era. Okay. So I'm going to guess 1848. You got the decade. Oh no. It's 1842. Oh no. But like you were saying, like I figured this is definitely closer to 50s. Nope. I've never seen that. Like that much of a plunging neckline that early. Maybe they took an old Georgian gown and made it 1840s. It wouldn't be shocking. We're not yeah. the first to take grandma's clothes. <laughs> okay, so I do not get the point, but we're off to an okay start. I at least got the decade right. Only six years off, that's not too bad. The next one is this... Wow, this looks incredibly much like Georgian menswear. This kind of Georgian mimicking thing was really common during the second bustle period. And also a bit into natural form. Because of the lack of ruffle and the very kind of straight lines and silhouette, I'm going to guess it's maybe late natural form. I'm going to say 1883. It's 1882 to 1886, so technically- Yes! Yes! I got it! So I've got one point. Do you want to keep points, Brittany? Mm -hmm. Pencil, pencil, pencil. Everyone gets to witness my chaos. One point for Vasse. So, this is a wrapper? Yep. <laughs> not a 
rapper like a musician rapper, but a day rapper, which is a kind of more casual style gown that people wore a lot at home, especially during the mid-Victorian period. It's a glorified house coat. You see it a lot, 1840s, 1850s, 1860s, that kind of thing. It could be pleated down and then have some sort of belt, or it can just have like a tie like this one does with the pretty little tassels at the end. I know, I love the tassels. I love the fabric, it's so loud. <laughs> They're so pretty. It looks like it's cartridge pleated as well, or gauged, looking at the second photo. And this style of fabric is distinctly mid-Victorian as well. It's a little bit hard with wrappers because they didn't actually change that much um, from the 1840s to the 1860s. It's mostly in the sleeve shape that a lot of changes were happening. I'm actually wearing the same sleeve shape right now, and this is an 1860s bodice. I'm going to guess that this is from 18... 58. Final answer? Yes. Nope. No. It's 1875. What? I know. No way. I was shocked. But I was looking through, looking through, looking through, and I saw this one, of course. It's bright orange and it looks like upholstery fabric. So instantly my brain is, yes. Look at the date. It's definitely not where it should be. <laughs> wow. 1870s are already like bustle era. So it's very bizarre to me that this would come from that time because I almost feel like this is like a hand-me-down that they just didn't change the style of. So number four, I think. The problem with this is that I have a really hard time discerning, like I said, between first and second bustle era. First bustle era is like a lot more ruffles and lace and decor. But then you get wealthier garments, like from the Met, and even the second bustle era had a lot of that as well. So I'm kind of like, is this first bustle or is this second? It's definitely one of the two, obviously, because of the giant bustle on the butt. Um, <laughs> you gotta hide a whole other person in there. <laughs> you could put a whole entire different person. You could probably sneak a lot of snacks as well if you just, like, turn your lobster cage into a snack holder. I'm going to guess first bustle. Okay. Ooh. No, maybe it's second bustle. You're second guessing yourself. I know. Okay, first first bustle. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say 1876. 1875, that's my final answer. That's your final answer? Yes. Okay. It's 1870. What? No way. It's 1870. That's so weird because at the same time in 1870, you have gowns that look like 1865. I know, with the gigantic Cinderella hoop skirts. The one thing that I think gave it away is slightly earlier for me for this one was the trimming. Because it reminds me of the 60s. Oh well, at least I'm getting decades right. I mean, it could be much You're worse. You're getting the decade. Maybe we should have changed it and have like one point for the decade and two points for the year. <laughs> Whoops, too late for that. <laughs> Next one. Woo! So this screams 1860s. The reason why is because you've already got the elliptical crinoline, which is something you don't really see until the 1860s. In the 1850s, you have a circular crinoline. So it's a lot more lamp shady, I guess. It looks like a cupcake. Yeah, it is cupcakey. So by this point, you kind of have it so that most of the, the volume is kind of in the back. So this mm. is this is like the precursor, right, to the bustle. So it's like having that volume at the back. Oh, is... shifting back. Yeah, it's just starting to, to, to migrate backwards. I will say it's 1865. Final answer? Yes. That's exactly right. Yes. Woo! Because it looks so much like your bodice. And my bodice is like 18, early 1860s to 1865 is like kind of the cutoff point. Yay, two points, woo! Well, now Can I give you an extra point for guessing exactly the year? <laughs> Look at you, Star. There's not a sticker. I don't like stickers. No, no stickers. Oh gosh, the star really made me think of stickers. Now I'm kind of like... No, go, no, shoot. <laughs> okay, what is this? <laughs> what I saw it, I had no idea what it was, and I knew I had to pick it. <laughs> it. It almost looks like a clergyman, you know, like a clergy person's attire i will preface in the search bar i put dress so i don't know if this is a cape 
but no other capes came up. It was all dresses. Wow, what? I'm just gonna use my instinct here, and I'm gonna say that this is early 1840s. You know, I have no idea what this is. I'm just gonna say 1842. I'll direct you a little. Okay. And say, pay attention to the top of the bodice and the sleeves. Okay, so it's 1830s. The reason I think that is because the sleeve is almost like a mutton. Can you guess the year? 1837. 1835. Yes! I got the point. And I think I do deserve to get it. It was really hard. I love the next one. Ooh, this is gorgeous. Isn't it? It feels evening wear, and it feels 1850s, because you get this uh, tiered skirt business a lot in the 1850s, and it's very cupcakey. I didn't know that was specifically 1850s. Yeah. I'm learning. Day wear typically would have longer sleeves and higher necks, so I would say this is probably evening wear, but probably someone who liked to dress a little bit more conservatively than the kind of typical 1850s evening wear that we see where the neckline is really plunging and it's off the shoulders. I'm going to say this is 1850... 57. 1852. Oh no, I'm always like a few years off. You're so close! Well, I got the decade, so, and I was only, you know, four years, five years off, five years off. The next one is definitely 1840s. This kind of gathering, smocking pleats thing in the, in the front. This is really distinctly 1840s. And you can see the dropped shoulder as well. And then you've got just a ton of pleating. And the waist is almost elongated a little bit. But which year? <laughs> Maybe early middle. So I'm going to say 1844. Final answer? Yes. 1840. Oh. Can we count that? 0.5? Mm, fine, give me 0.5. I'm too generous. So you got three and a half and a star. This grading system is just all over the place. Like me! <laughs> it's because I didn't want to try to memorize the actual code for each dress. I gave them all little names. This one I just called legit upholstery fabric. Honestly, it reminds me of like the 1970s. Yeah, actually, wallpaper at that. All we need now is like a shag carpet. No. <laughs> That's allergies in a nutshell. <laughs> the next one is obviously Regency because that distinct empire waistline. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's pretty long, but it also looks like Almost like a red go of the Regency period, rather than a gown. It kind of looks a little bit more military-esque, like the buttons, decor. Regency, but make it military. Exactly. Hmm. I think this is 18 teens, and the reason why is because the early 1800s, you had really, really, really long skirts. They would be, like, dragging on the ground. Oh yeah, they had that super long train in the back. And this one, yeah, it's it's long, but it's not it's not that long. And so I'm gonna say it's probably 1810. 1810? Your tone of voice is concerning me. <laughs> yeah, 1810. 1820. <laughs> no, it was a whole decade off. This one threw me for a loop too. So someone like me out in the out in the boondocks finally catching wind that trends are changing. That one was pretty off. That one was hard. All right, next one. This is 1830s. It's the sleeves and the waist. Mm -hmm. But what, yeah. I'm gonna say 1834. Any last minute guesses? 1833. This one is 1826 to 29. This game is so hard. The way that this game is making me feel is that I've literally been studying Victorian fashion for probably three years, four years, and I still have trouble guessing these. Don't be hard on yourself. You can study it for so long and then there's always exceptions that completely throw you off. It just shows you that the learning just never ends with these things. Which is kind of a fun side to it. it but is. also, one thing that it's also showing is that trends did not stop at a certain year. There was overlap. There was a lot of overlap. Either this person is really tall or this is early Regency, but it does feel 1820s to me at the same time, so great. I'm not even sure I know the decade of this one. Regardless of what you guess, I was wild and wrong, so... 
I have no idea. So I'm just going to say 1822. You're actually not that far off. It's 18 AD. Yes. Okay. That was actually okay. You said looks like 18 teens, but also kind of 20s. So it's that little in-between period. The next one is loud. This is a gorgeous gown. Wow. I'm going to say probably late 1830s because it's almost giving me some 1840s vibes as well. I can see that. I'm going to say 1836. Dead on. Really? Yeah, it's 1836. Yes. Woo! One point, and another star. Awesome, thank you. You may have saw a look of shock on my face just a second ago, and that was because I scrolled to the next one. This one? What is this? This honestly looks like it could be a gown from, like, Shakespeare times. I had to double check the year on this several times. It looks like a nightgown. Smocking is very popular during the kind of mid- Victorian period. I actually think that this might be a wrapper without the belt. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I kind of wish they had put this with a belt just to see what it would look like. I changed the color personally, but... Does it have a distinct year or is it just a decade? This one has a decade. Okay, I think it's 1840s. Yeah? Yeah. This is why this one threw me for a loop, because that was my guess at first. It's 1890s. What? Nothing there says 1890s. Okay, maybe the smocking a little bit, a little bit, but ugh. I'm absolutely shocked. I can't believe that it's 1890s. Ah, this one. So this is either 1850s or 60s because the pagoda sleeve is from that period. Is the second photo the same dress? It is, yeah. It's styled so differently that it almost looks like a completely different dress. I'm going to say that this is 60s. And the reason why is because you can see kind of slight ellipticalness going on in the back. Yeah, you can kind of see where there's more gathers towards the back. But I'm going to say it's very early 1860s, very late 1850s. So I'm going to say 1859. You get a point because it's 1857. Yes! Woo! That look of sheer joy! <laughs> It's making me feel like I actually know something when I felt like I kind of knew nothing a couple of dresses ago. I love this one though. It's so bold. It is definitely very Victorian ugly pretty. And this type of fabric, you see it so much in the mid-Victorian period especially. Whoever thinks that the Victorians dressed in drab browns are lying to you. I love the next one if you can't tell by what I'm wearing. <laughs> yes, this is definitely your era and it's early I'm going to say early 1890s, and the reason why is because it has the 1890 to 92 3 sleeve. Because by the mid 1890s, you see the leg of mutton sleeve come back, but before that, you have like the slight puff, but it's still a straight sleeve, but it's a two piece sleeve. Look at the back though. Going to say 1890. 1890? 91. It's 1886. Okay. This was a tricky one. I actually guessed 1891 myself. Again, going by the sleeves. It's not really a bustle, it's probably a, a slight pad and then very intense pleating. 1886, you said, like, at that point, the bustle is still really, really big. This is just a very forward-thinking woman. Clearly very forward-thinking. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I have an itch under my corset and I can't scratch it. The next one is so crazy, I love it. Okay, so this is late 1890s coming on to 1900s. I'm gonna say 1888. 1888? Sorry, 1898. <laughs> I was gonna say you said late 1890s and they're going yeah. to late 1880s. I, I, um, I misspoke. 1898. 1890. What? It's 1890, I know. You'd think with like the slight bell shape to the, to the, to the skirt. Wow, that's so crazy. Cause to me, that type of collar as well is later 1890s. You know, you get these almost kind of gothic, vampy looking collars with these neck pieces as well. They're so wonderful. But yeah, I, like you, I immediately thought definitely late 1890s. Next! Okay, I think this is late 1890s. You've got some serious bell skirt going. You've got this thing in the front that the late 1890s has that goes into kind of early Edwardian as well. It does. And you've got a belt, which is like really common going into late Victorian into early Edwardian as well. I'll guess 1898 for this one as well. Final answer? Yeah. You get another star. Yay, dead on? Exactly dead on. Woo! Need to redeem myself. 
Next one is my gothic dream. This one is 1895, I'm guessing. It's because it has the leg of mutton, which you only really start to see in the mid-1890s. Once again. <laughs> but this could be a trick question as well. I'm going to say 1895. I don't know if it's any kind of hint, but the designer is Emile Pignat. Another answer. 1897. You're close for the first time. No! 1891 to 93. With the leg of mutton sleeve. The characteristic thing that I think of with 93 is the little itty bitty poofs at the top. And yeah. then it's fitted the whole way down. Yeah, this thing wow. is probably 1895. And maybe because it was a high designer, they were kind of on the more cutting edge side of the trend. Also a French designer as well, and France was always kind of ahead of itself. This next one is firstly beautiful. Isn't it? This one I think is late 1890s. I think it's 1896, no, seven. Ooh, I don't know. But then it, it does look very 1880s, turn of the 80s to 90s. Okay, I'm gonna say 1890. 1890? Final answer? Yeah. 1880. Really? Oh, it's natural form. That makes so much more sense. I can kind of see what the tab is in the back, but the thing that threw me off, I think, is the fact that the skirt is so trumpety. That's kind of very, like, late 1890s. Yeah, actually. You see a lot more elongation with natural form, and this almost has a bit more shape to it. Again, too, you can see the, the Georgian influence. And for the final one. This one is very, very natural form. This to me just screams late 1870s. That's just because of this overskirt thing and the fact that there's not really a bustle. This is what I mean by that elongated shape that you tend to see in natural form. Not as much volume basically at the high waist. Or at the hips either. Exactly, so I'm gonna say this is 1879. You get the point because it's 1881. Yay, just got it. Just got it. Woo. So that is the end of our game. Wow, that was nerve-wracking. I think it was just a wonderful example that you cannot judge by stereotypes. So how many points did I get? You got five, six, seven, eight and a half, and three stars. So eight and a half and two star, three stars out of 20. I think that's pretty good considering some of those are very confusing. So thank you so much for watching and for maybe playing along with us. I hope you've enjoyed this slightly more entertainment style video. And we're going to continue to do the series throughout the year and hopefully continue to cover the rest of the centuries so that you can see it all go downhill from here. <laughs> thank you so much, Brittany, for joining in on the channel. And if any of you would like to follow Brittany, all of her social media information is in the description box down below. We'll see you all in a month and a half when we dive into the 15th century. Wish us luck. Yes.